All right, so my crazy theories on Berserker Chisato did not turn out to be in episode nine of Licorice Coil. Still a great episode, though. Um, more heartbreaking than crazy and dark that I was kind of assuming that it would turn out to be. For those that missed my episode eight impressions, my thought process is that they were going to insert these electrodes, like make her heart go like super crazy fast and make her go into like berserk mode and take out the DA. But no, just, <laughs> just put her on... Uh, limited time and like I said that's technically more heartbreaking than her doing a bunch of crazy stuff that she doesn't want to do but yeah solid episode overall really did create a lot of question marks at the very end of it which I'll get into my theories on that if you did miss it at the end of the credits they did have a final scene with Majima and Yoshi and again it sort of insinuates something but I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it but now opening up the episode we do have Chisato gets saved by Takana she comes in well she didn't get really saved she just <laughs> came in after the job after the deed was done and chased off uh, Yoshi's assistant and then yes that's when we find out that apparently these electrodes shocking it has messed up the hardware so that they can't recharge it anymore so I guess to make it scientific or whatever it seems like there's a module in there that allows the electricity to come in and recharge her heart which seems to be that was a thing they had to do on a regular basis they can no longer access that hardware to recharge it, so she's only got about two months left to live, depending on how much she moves, which, sure enough, I knew it was going to happen at some point in the episode. They have Chisato's running around, and Takana's like, please stop, <laughs> please stop running around, please relax, which, honestly, I thought they were going to get into, like, just having Chisato retire, like, stop moving around, just relax, and spend your time with everybody, but I don't think that's what Chisato wants to do. Chisato is still, she's still stuck in what Yoshi wanted her to do. He's, she's still stuck in wanting to fulfill this promise that she would help people, just like he helped her, to be everybody else's savior. But yeah, through the episode, through basically Kurumi grilling Mika, and also additionally from the perspective of this camera that Chisato eventually gets back from the commander, we do get a perspective of Chisato's past, which was interesting because I honestly this entire time believed that Chisato was the way that she was because of the heart. But it was actually, obviously, because of her talents, her innate talent to be able to sense when people are firing at her, being able to observe things well enough that she could dodge bullets. And that was exactly what Yoshi gravitated to. Now, the big shocker, the big reveal in this episode is obviously that Mika was the one that started all. Mika was the one that presented Chisato to Yoshi, presented this, this girl that has this great talent to Yoshi, thus allowing her to get into the Allen Institute's whole system because she doesn't have much to live. She has this heart problem. So Yoshi, seeing this talent that she has to kill, he goes off and gets with the Allen Institute and provides her with this heart, this, this breakthrough of a heart that is above and beyond all technology we have. There was one problem with it and that it only had the durability to probably last until she reached an adulthood, which is one of those things of like, yeah, that technically isn't really as much as what she has right now. It's like cutting off the power for it now is just maybe decreasing a little bit because she will eventually become an adult. I'm assuming because it's anime that she's probably in her 14s, maybe her 15s the most because anime does not like anybody older than that. So I'm assuming she probably still had another five years to go at least. But the whole point that they have is that Licorice can only go until they're about 18 before they're finally kind of decommissioned. But yeah, Yoshi does this. Eventually, Chisato ends up seeing him at the facility, knows exactly who she he is based on how he's dressed. Like, no, you're not part of this facility. You have to be the one that's doing all this stuff. You're my savior. And he's like, well, I'll, go, I'll become your savior until you can basically do what you need to do. And that's what kind of created that whole mindset in Chisato is that she wants to be savior to other people. She wants to do exactly to other people what he did to her to save people. I think we've all but completely stated it that yes, Mika and Yoshi were a thing. <laughs> yeah, you can argue that they were just kind of hanging out, they were bros, but I think the scene with the, the hotel with one bed and them both in robes, I think we've all but confirmed this point that Yoshi and Mika was a thing. So all the Yaoi fans, you get what you want. Uh, hopefully eventually we'll get the Yuri fans, we'll get what they want, which is probably a kiss from <laughs> between Chisato and Takina. I've only, I've only seen Takina and Chisato as just really really close friends and that's what i usually get with a lot of these shows is like when the the yuri baiting aspect is like no they're technically just really close friends why can't we not just have them be very close friends they have to kiss i know i know i'll be fine with it if it happens but let's just let the characters decide but there was one other cool thing that was revealed in the history stuff obviously the reveal that mika was the one that started it all mika's at fault here he was the one that presented this whole thing you would you can argue that mika 
got Chisato more time. She was going to die within six months, and getting this heart allowed her to live longer, but it did start this whole process of making her basically a tool for Yoshi. Now, the question mark is still remaining is what is Yoshi's plan? Like, what, why is he doing this? Why is he making her have limited time? What is his purpose? Why is he even doing all this stuff? What is cutting her down to only having two months going to create? What is that going to nudge her to do? He sent his assistant to limit her time. What is that going to do? How does Chisato even know what she's supposed to do? Unless we think about what he said to Takina. My theory is he said that Takina has potential. Like she's, she knows that Shisato's not supposed to be there and that he looks forward. To, he basically said without saying it, I'm looking forward to using you later. So I think what's going to happen is that Yoshi eventually is going to tell Takina, I have a new heart for her, but I need her to do something. Or I need you to do something. But no, I got sidetracked. The other thing that we noted in the history was that Fuki liked Shisato. Like when Shisato collapsed in that footage, Fuki was the one that went to her side. So it kind of shows that Fuki, when they were young, while everybody else thought she was a monster, Fuki ran to her side and said she needed help. Like she was holding her, which is kind of cute. It, we, we, you kind of get a little sense of that, that, that Fuki's not a terrible person, but it was cool to get this other perspective of her. And yes, more of her blushing at the sight of Mika. <laughs> but yeah, back to the current times, Chisato gets an invitation from the commander. That's where we find out that apparently she had this camera, she confiscated it, and something that chisato has been wanting for a long time. That's where we got the picture of Yoshi that she really cherishes. But the commander wants Chisato to join their team. She has a plan to take down Majima and she needs Chisato. Now this is interesting because the way that she puts it is that you've not put your talents, that the, the talents we gave you, you've not put them to use enough. Before you pass away, we want to use you on this project, which I thought was really selfish. And I, I hope that eventually they, they discuss what that whole plan was. Like, why does she go out of her way to say, hey, Chisato, you're dying soon. We want to use you for this project. Why exactly does she need Chisato? Why specifically Chisato? Again, unless she's being puppeted by somebody. We already know that she is being messed around with by Walnut or Kurumi, but why specifically Chisato? But that at least gave Chisato the end to say, well, if you want me in, take Takana in. So what I think is gonna happen is now going forward in the next episode, you're gonna have this big project where they're gonna go after Majima and Chisato's not gonna join the DA. She's gonna work on the outside while Takina is working on inside. The whole date scene was cute, seeing Takina going around Chisato. I love that the little beeper goes off and she's rushed her to the next place. Like she has this set plan. We need to hit each of these locations. She's just dragging Chisato along. It was it was super cute. And that all leads to the really cute scene at the very end where she wanted to wait for the snow to fall and this little cute scene there, really showing Chisato accepting what's been kind of given to her while obviously Takina is not okay with it. And Chisato's only response really to that is that there's no use in worrying about things that you can't handle yourself. That you just need to accept it with everything you have and good things will happen from it. And that led to the <laughs> very difficult uh, parting scene. I Honestly, with this last, this very last moment just before the cast runs, it had this little moment where Takina's like, okay, I need to go contact the DA before the, the day ends. That way I can... You know, that, that's the restriction they gave her to rejoin the DA. So she runs off and Chisato's up here and I'm like, Chisato's going to fall. <laughs> it's going to like stop right there. Like, bam, heart stops and she falls over. I'm just waiting for this moment. It's a ticking time bomb. I'm just waiting for it to go off. And they didn't do it, but it still was a, it, was, it hurt watching them kind of part ways because I think that's that parting. You're going to have the next day, Takina's going to be with the DA working on this project with Majima. And again, Chisato's going to be doing her own thing and... There's a question mark if they're going to be able to see each other again before that time runs out. It was interesting that within the same week, we had the same exact shot in this show as Call of the Night. Call of the Night this week ended with the shot of these two pairs of characters walking away with this bird's eye view. And then here we had them two parting ways with a bird's eye view. It was kind of interesting. But no, the final scene, that's where all the question marks come from. <laughs> At some point in the episode, we had Majima confront Robota and say, who's this uh, Yoshi guy? Tell me who he is. And Robota tells him, yes, Yoshi was the one that was giving support to Chisato. And Majima says, I have a plan. <laughs> and that cuts to, again, the last scene where we have Yoshi is with his assistant driving down this tunnel. And then eventually they stop to find Majima in front of them. And they, of course, at gunpoint. And Yoshi comes out and sets a briefcase on the ground. <laughs> What's in the briefcase? That's the big question mark. Now, the, one, the the thing that we all hope for, the thing that we all hope for, and I think I was kind of alluding to this with their, the little brief meeting we have between Jisato and Majima, is this is the hope, this is the point where we find out that Majima is going to do things to benefit Jisato. He's not a good guy, but he's going to do things to benefit her. 
It's that whole idea that I will be the one to take her down. And if she's going to go down by this heart, then I want that fixed because I'm going to be the one to take her down. And so, yes, the hope that we all have, the, the copium, as people would put it, is that there's a heart in there. That he contacted Yoshi and said, what's going on with Shisato? Now, here's, here's the thing that breaks it, all of our hope right here is there's no reason that Majima should know that Chisato is on limited time. He shouldn't know this. The only thing that Majima should know is that, yes, Yoshi was the one that was giving support to Chisato through the Allen Institute. He may have found out that it was due to a heart, but he shouldn't. The only thing that he knows from his conversation with Chisato is that she had a supporter in the Allen Institute. They gave her something, and now she wants to, to help people. He shouldn't know that that heart is on borrowed time, that it's only got two more months left. But maybe they did some prodding. Maybe Roboto did some prodding. Maybe he contacted Yoshi and said, what did you support? And then found out that this is limited time. His contact of, of Yoshi could have led to him finding out from Yoshi himself that, yeah. And because Yoshi wants to let him know this, because he wants to prod Majima and Chisato, he might have told Majima, yeah, and, I, and it's on limited time now. She's only got two months left. What are you going to do about it? So there is a thought process there that, yeah, through some prodding, Majima found out that she's on borrowed time and that she now he wants a heart from him and he has brought that to him. And that will be their ticket in. There, I can't think of anything else being in that briefcase. Was it going to be a gun? Was it going to be a bomb? Like, what is going to be in there that he doesn't already have? Majima has a whole bunch of weapons. He doesn't need anything from Yoshi. What would he need? What would only Yoshi have? The heart. And that's what we're all going to be hoping for. That, that Majima be like, here... I have it for you. I don't want you to be taken down by what you have inside of you. I want to be the one that takes you down. It's the rival aspect, the benefit through rivals. And yes, partially having a similar enemy. But we'll see. <laughs> we will see. We shall see. I can't think of anything else in there. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I think everybody is probably thinking the same thing. If they take out Desato, screw this entire show. <laughs> screw this entire show. I don't want it anymore. But overall, fantastic episode. I think it did a really good job of portraying not just... Takina's frustration, but also Chisato. I love this whole scene where Mizuki is driving Chisato to the uh, DA, and at some point, this this crazy band of guys drive next door, and she she's acting like you know Takina's the one that's struggling and having issues, but then she kind of shows some frustration right there, show that she's frustrated deep inside and just not showing it. And Mizuki even notices that, kind of just doesn't talk anymore once that happens. Yeah, Takina struggle, Chisato doing things that would normally bug Takina, but then Takina not responding to it. It just did a really good job of showing how the mood got sucked down really quickly and how some of them tried to remedy it. But anyways, looking forward to the next episode, episode 10. We have, what, uh, four more episodes, so plenty of time to work out things. <laughs> Hopefully we don't lose Chisato here soon, but Again, I think it's in that briefcase, and I think they're going to probably figure out some way of helping her, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure to hit that like button down below, comment, let me know what's a lot of the episode. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. I do news, reviews, first impressions. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I greatly appreciate everybody that considers, and y'all take care.